Hello friends, welcome back to my channel Mukesh English. This is Mukesh Soni. Friends, in this video, we are going to have a discussion of the additional English fourth semester BA, BCom, BSc, BCA, all courses, fourth semester, all courses, additional English model question paper discussion under Bangalore City University. Again, we are going to have a discussion of BCU fourth semester additional English model question paper and your, your textbook name is Convergence 4. So to begin with, before that, we should know the syllabus of fourth semester additional English. Here you have the syllabus on screen. You have the literary components like why we travel by Pico Ayer, the lost tribes of Amazon by Joshua Hammer, the earth is our friend, Yasuf Afari, once upon a time by Gabriel, the golden party by Catherine Mansfield, the rabbit profense by Doris, and you have the language component like composition, composing the invitations, telephone skills, where you need to draft the telephonic conversation, proofreading symbols and understanding new headlines. So two hours, 30 minutes examination and marks weightage, 60 marks. So let's begin it. Section A. The section A of your question paper consists the literary components, prose, poetry, or the short story. And in this section A, you have three divisions. You have five marks, you have one marks, five questions, and five marks, two questions, and 10 marks, one question. So let's have a discussion. Answer any five questions in a phrase or sentence. Each, each, um, each question has the one mark weightage. So one marks, five questions. Number one, what is Maloka? Maloka Veru is a traditional, traditional longhouse belonging to the 30,000 strong Tikuna tribe. Then the cyclic function of the earth's ecology is compared to, it is compared to the organs of human body. How do people laugh now as per the speaker in the poem, once upon a time, they laugh with their teeth. Question number four, what impression do we form of Laura from her interaction with Marky Man in the garden party? From Laura's interaction with the man who is arrived to put up the Marky, we can infer that we can find out that she loved to arrange things, but that she was rather shy and nervous when actually put to the task. Question number five. How does travel set one free according to the author in the essay, Why We Travel? When we travel, no one knows us and there are no expectations about particular type of behavior, dress or habits. Hence, we have feeling of freedom. Question number six. Why does Laura want to stop the party? Is she successful? Laura wants to stop the party because she is deeply moved by the tragic event. What is the tragic event? the death of her neighbor and she feels that it would be inappropriate to celebrate and enjoy themselves in the midst of the neighbor's death and the grief that the family is experiencing she remains unsuccessful and the party continues so out of these six questions you need to opt five questions each for one mark so this is a five marks questions from section a now we are moving to the part two of section a out of three questions, you need to opt two questions each for five marks. Question number one, write a note on the rubber boom of 1990s and its effects on the tribes of the rainforest. <clears throat> Around 90s came the rubber boom based in the port of Equitos, a Peruvian company, Casa Arana, controlled much of what is now the Colombian Amazon region. Company representative operating operating along the Putumoyo, Putumoyo passaged tens of thousands of Indians to gather rubber or cocho and flogged, starved, murdered those who resisted. Before the trade died out of completely 1930s, the Uitu, the Uitoto tribe's population fell from 40,000 to 10,000 and the Endoke Indians dropped from 10,000 to 300. Means to say the population of those tribes came down because of this rubber boom. 
other groups simply cease to exist even the other groups also getting down so that was a time when most of the most of the now isolated groups opted for isolation says franco the yuri which is passi moved a great distance to get away from the cocheros in 1905 theodor kuch greenberg a, a german ethnologist traveled between the between the kaketa and putumayo rivers he noted ominously he noted ominously the abundant house of passi and yuri along the pure a uh, tributary of the putumayo evidence of a flight deeper into the rainforest to escape the depredations question number 2 for 5 marks the earth is our friend promotes the concept of biocentrism biocentrism the earth is our friend is by is a poem by yus by yasuf afari indeed expresses a sentiment aligned with biocentrism highlighting the interconnectedness and harmony of all elements in the natural world the verses emphasize the mutual relationship between humanity and the earth underscoring the responsibility humans have as stewards of the environment the poem portrays the earth as a living entity likening it to a garden of creation adorned with lush vegetation the interconnectedness of various natural elements such as roots preventing soil erosion rivers flowing like blood streams the rule of the sun moon and stars in the earth's ecosystem all serves to illustrate the delicate balance and interdependence within nature the poem's message the poem's message also underscores the rep, the reciprocity the reciprocity of caring for earth by by protecting the earth humans ensure its continued ability to provide sustenance shelter and support this sentiment resonates with the biocentric perspective which places equal value on all life forms and emphasizes the importance of maintaining the health and well-being of the entire ecological system overall the poem captures the essence of biocentrism by portraying the earth as a friend to be cherished and respected and by advocating for a harmonious coexistence between humanity and the natural world question number 3 for 5 marks describe the relationship between laura and her mother as presented in the story the garden party the garden party is a short story written by catherine mansfield the in the story laura is a young woman who comes from an affluent family and is preparing for a garden party to be hosted at her family's estate the relationship between laura and her mother is presented in a very nuanced and complex manner throughout the narrative at the beginning of the story laura is portrayed as being excited and enthusiastic about the upcoming garden party eager to involve herself in the preparations her interactions with her mother are initially characterized by a sense of deference and obedience laura's mother mrs sheridan as depicted as a figure of authority and responsibility within the family she is concerned with maintaining the family's social status and reputation as the story progresses laura becomes more introspective and starts to question the social norms and class divisions that surround her she becomes emotionally affected by the death of a working class neighbor on the day of the party this event causes her to question the appropriateness of the lavish garden party when there is such sorrow nearby laura's evolving perspective leads to a conflict with the mother's more traditional out- outlook The climax of the story occurs when Laura wishes to cancel the garden party out of respect for the dead neighbor. Here the relationship between Laura and her mother is characterized by a clash of values and priorities. 
Mrs. Sheridan is portrayed as being more concerned with social conven conventions and maintaining appearances, while Laura is more empathetic and sensitive to the suffering of others. In the resolution of the story, Laura's mother advises her to follow her own judgment, leaving the decision of whether to cancel the party up to her. This moment suggests a shift in the relationship dynamics. Laura's mother respects her daughter's burgeoning independence and ability to make her own choice. To conclude, the relationship between Laura and her and her mother in the garden party evolves from one of deference and obedience to one marked by the emergence of Laura's individual perspective and moral considerations. The story showcases the tension between societal expectations and personal empathy and how these factors can influence family dynamics. So now we are moving to the, the third part of section A, 10 marks question and you have here three choices out of the three questions you need to attempt only one question and you need to write in the two pages. So one thing I forgot, I have forgotten to mention that uh, you need to pair with the answers. Uh, I have given the maximum length of lengthy answers so that it can help you to answer any questions which appear from the particular text or from the particular unit or the lesson. So have patience while listening. Comment on the concept of social proper, uh, social uh, property, propriety as depicted by the poet Okara in Once Upon a Time. So the social propriety we are going to discuss here in this poem. In Gabriel Okara's poem, Once Upon a Time, the concept of social propriety is presented as a double-edged sword, highlighting both its protective and the, the, and the restrictive aspects within a society. The poem reflects on the loss of innocence and the erosion of genuine human connections due to the veneer to the veneer of social conventions and expectations. Throughout the poem, the speaker nostalgically recalls a time when people's interactions were characterized by sincerity and authenticity. Uh, and authenticity. However, as, social, as society evolves, it becomes increasingly, increasingly focused on outward appearances and conforming to norms, leading to a loss of genuine and uh, genuine self the notion is the notion is depicted in the poem's repeated refrain like once upon a time once upon a time which evokes a sense of longing for a simpler and most and more genuine past the concept of social propriety is depicted as a facade that individuals put on to fit it in the so in the societal expectations the poet uses vivid imagery of mask as the speaker describes how people wear iron masks to hide the true emotions and intentions. This imagery underscores the idea that societal norms force individuals to present a false front, leading to the suppression of the genuine feelings and thoughts. The poem critics the price paid for adhering to these social norms. The speaker laments on the loss of authenticity warmth and spontaneity that once existed in human interactions. The walls built by societal expectations have resulted in a sense of alienation where people feel it, where people find it difficult to express their true selves and concept on a deeper level. Hence, Okara's portrayal, or Okara's portrayal of social propriety in Once Upon a Time serves as a cautionary commentary on the dangers of becoming too preoccupied with appearances and societal expectations. The poem encourages readers to reflect on the importance of maintaining genuine con connections and authenticity in a world that often values conformity over true human connection. It serves as a reminder that while social propriety has its place, it should not come at the ex at the expense of our essential humanity and the ability to connect with others on a meaningful level. Now the question number two for 10 marks. 
comment on the character of Laura and her inability to complete her sentence at the end of the story. In Catherine Mansfield, Mansfield's, uh, I'm sorry, in Catherine Mansfield's short story, The Golden Party, the character of Laura plays a central role and her inability to complete a sentence at the end of the story carries significant symbolic and thematic weight. This moment reflects her personal transformation and the realization of the complexities of life and human experience. Throughout the story, Laura is depicted as a young woman from the privileged background preparing for a lavish garden party hosted by her family. She begins the story with an innocent and somewhat naive perspective, eagerly participating in the preparations and engaging in conversations with her family members. However, her encounter with death upon learning that a poor neighbor has died marks a turning point in her understanding of the world. As Laura ventures to the deceased neighbor's house with a basket of leftover party food, she is confronted with a stark contrast between her own privileged existence and the harsh realities faced by the less fortunate. This experience leads her to question the purpose and the appropriateness of the extravagant party in the face of such tragedy. When Laura returns home, she attempts to express her thoughts and feelings to her brother, Laurie, but she is unable to find the words to articulate her thoughts fully. Her incomplete sentence, isn't life, reflects her struggle to convey the complexity of her emotions and the profound insight she has gained. This moment of silence can be seen as a representation of the limitations of language and societal norms in conveying deeper human experience and emotions. Laura's inability to complete a sentence highlights the difficulty of reconciling the stark realities of life with the superficialities of her privileged upbringing. It also serves to emphasize the story's theme of the clash between social conventions and the genuine empathy. Her unfinished sentence symbolizes the complexity of the issue she's grappling with and suggests that some feelings and thoughts cannot be easily expressed within the confines of traditional language. Thus, Laura's inability to complete a sentence at the end of the garden at the end of the garden party is a poignant moment that brings her personal growth and the shift in her worldview. It underscores the limitations of language in conveying complex emotions and signifies her realization of the depth and intricacy of human existence beyond the confines of social propriety. The last question for 10 marks from the section A. Sorry. <clears throat> question number three. Travel helps us question the fixity of identities. How does Pico Iyer demonstrate, demonstrate this point in his essay, Why We Travel? In his essay, Why We Travel, Pico Iyer explores the transformative power of travel and how it challenges the fixed notions of identity that people often hold. He demonstrates this by this point by discussing various aspects of travel and its impact on a perception of self and the world. Escape from familiarity. So let's discuss point wise. Ayer suggests that travel takes us out of our comfort zones and away from the familiar context that define our identities. By immersing ourselves in foreign environments, we are liberated from the roles and expectations that we play at home. This detachment from the usual surroundings allows us to question the fixity of our identities and consider different ways of being. Being observer. Ayer, the author, describes how travel turns us into observers, enabling us to see ourselves and our culture from an outsider's perspective. This shift in viewpoint helps us recognize that our identity is not an absolute truth, 
but rather a constructed narrative influenced by our cultural upbringing travel prompts us to reconsider the rigidity of these narratives cultural hybridity through interactions with diverse cultures travelers often find themselves adopting elements from different societies ayer points out that this blending of cultural influences challenges the notion of a singular unchanging identity travelers may find themselves embodying embodying traits and ideas that do not conform to the initial self perception fluidity and adaptation the essay highlights the fluidity of identities in foreign context when faced with new challenges and situations individuals adapt and sometimes modify their behavior or beliefs this malleability contradicts the idea of a fixed identity and underscores the role of context in shaping who we are fragmented selves author suggests that travel can lead to a fragmentation of self where once identity is not a singular entity but a collection of experience and encounters this fragmentation challenges the notion of a unified self and opens up the possibility of embracing multiple facets of identity discovering unexplored aspects travel often exposes individuals to new experiences and perspectives that they might not encounter at home this exposure can lead to the discovery of latent interest talents or values that challenge one's pre preconceived identity to conclude pico ayers essay why we travel portrays travel as a catalyst for self exploration and personal evolution through exp- through exposure to diverse cultures unfamiliar environments and new challenges travelers are prompted to question the fixity of their of their identities and consider the multifaceted nature of who they are this essay encourages the readers to embrace the transformative potential of traveler travel in broadening the understanding of self and the world so this is about the section a4 25 marks one mark five questions five marks two questions and 10 marks one questions one question so now we are moving to the we are moving to the literary part section b literary component novella literary component is here novella the rabbit proof fence the novella now here you have you will be having uh, two question two sections here one section again uh, you need to attempt one question for 5 marks and one question for 10 marks so this section has a weightage of 15 marks remember 5 marks one question and 10 marks one question so again i'm telling you this question paper is quite bit lengthy have patience to go through this video answer any one question in about 80 to 100 words you have three choices out of three questions you need to attempt one question so plenty of choices you have lucky question number 1 what were some of the rules of moor river that the children had to follow in the book follow the rabbit proof fence so here this again i'm telling this section is from the novella the rabbit proof fence so in the book follow the rabbit proof fence by doris uh pilkington garimara also known as nyugi garimara which was later adapted into the film rabbit proof fence the story follows the experiences of indigenous australian children who are taken from their families and placed in moor river native settlement as a part of the government's assimilation policies these policies aimed to remove indigenous children from their families and culture to assimilate them into the european society into european society the following are some of the rules and the conditions that the children had to follow at moor river so these are the conditions now these are the rules we can say 
Number one, forced separation. The primary rule was that was enforced separation of the children from the families and communities. Indigenous children were forcefully were forcibly taken from the parents to be brought to Moor River native settlement, which led to profound trauma and loss. Second, European clothing and appearance. The children were required to wear European style clothing and cut their hair short. This was the part of the assimilation process aimed at erasing their culture, their cultural identity and making them conform to Western norms. Conform, not confirm. Conform means to adjust, to accept. Uh, Christian, uh, Christianization. So Christianity was imposed on the children and they were expected to attend church services and adopt Christian practices Indigenous spiritual beliefs and practices were discouraged and suppressed. <clears throat> um, English language. Another rule, another uh, condition. The children were prohibited from speaking their native languages and were expected to communicate only in English. This further disconnected them from the cultural roots and made it difficult for them to communicate with their families. Work and discipline. The children were assigned various tasks and chores, including domestic work, garden, gardening, and other forms of labor. Strict discipline was enforced, and they were expected to adhere to European-style work ethics. Next, you have limited content with family, limited contact with family. Contact with families was heavily restricted. The children were often isolated from their parents and siblings, making it challenging them telling for them to maintain the familial and cultural connections. Education. The education provided by provided was aimed at assimilating the children into European society. They were taught Western curriculum, which often neglected their indigenous culture and history. Supervision and surveillance. Surveillance. The children's movements and activities were closely monitored by settlement authorities this surveillance aimed to prevent any attempts to escape or maintain connections with their families. Cultural separation. Indigenous cultural practices such as language, traditions, ceremonies were actively discouraged and sometimes even punished. Hence, the rules and the conditions at Moor River native settlement reflect and reflect the oppressive and the dehumanizing nature of the assimilation policies imposed by the Australian government. The story of Follow the Rabbit Proof Fence sheds light on the resilience of the children who sought to escape these conditions and return to their families as well as the broader impact of such policies on indigenous communities in Australia. So this is first question for five marks. Question number two. Discuss the significance of the fence in the novella or in the story. In the story, the rabbit proof fence by Doris uh, Pilkington Garima, also known as Musi uh, Garimara. The fence referred to is the real life historical rabbit proof fence that runs through the Australian outback. This fence, which was built to control rabbit populations and protect agricultural lands, becomes a powerful symbol in the story, representing themes of separation, resistance, and hope. The fence takes on a deeper meaning. The fence takes on a... One minute. Yeah. The fence takes on a deeper meaning as it becomes a guide and a beacon of freedom for the three indigenous girls who escape from Moor River native settlement and embark on a journey to reunite with their families. So, so number one, social, the symbol of separation. I have tried to uh, answer those questions in the key points, so it's very easy for you to remember. The symbol of separation. The rabbit proof fence represents a physical and cultural separation forced upon indigenous families due to government policies. Just as the fence aims to divide the land, the policy of removing children from the families aims to divide 
indigenous communities from the children, culture, and heritage. Resistance and perseverance. For Molly, Daisy, and Gracie, the fence becomes a symbol of resistance against the oppressive assimilation policies. Their decision to follow the fence on the journey home becomes an act of defiance against the authorities who try to control their lives and identities. Hope and direction. The fence serves as a guiding path for the girls as they navigate the harsh Australian landscape. It gives them a sense of direction and purpose as they walk for days, relying on it to lead their home to home. The fence presents the hope of reuniting with the families, returning to the cultural roots, connection to ancestral lands. The fence represents a connection to the land and ancestral territories. The girls' journey along the fence allows them to traverse the land they belong to, re-establishing the connection within heritage and culture, unity and shared experience. The fence brings the girls together on the journey. It becomes a shared experience that binds them as they face challenges, make decisions, and support each other along the way. The fence highlights the importance of unity and cooperation in the face of adversity. Inspiration for others. The girl's story of following the fence inspires others in the community and beyond. Their journey becomes a symbol of courage, determination, and the will to resist oppressive policies, encouraging others to stand up against injustice. Cultural reclamation. The journey along the fence is a form of reclaiming the indigenous identity and culture. It's a way for the girls to reconnect with their homeland and assert the right to live according to their traditions. Hence, the rabbit proof fence serves as a powerful and multi layered symbol throughout the story. It, it also brings out the themes of separation, resistance, hope, cultural connection, and the determination to reclaim one's identity and heritage. The fence becomes a focal point for the girl's journey of self discovery, freedom reunification and reunification with their families. So that is the second question. Third question, Neville's official title is Chief Protector, yet the children at Nmur River seem to be scared of him. Why? This is again from the novella, The Rabbit Proof Fence. Neville's official title as Chief Protector of Aborigines or or ab origins ab origins gave him significant a uh, significant authority and power over the lives of indigenous Australians, including those at Moor River native settle, settlement. The fear that the children at Moor River had for Neville can be attributed to some factors, some reasons, some factors. It may be due to some reasons. Number one. Neville was responsible for implementing government policies that, force, that forcibly remote indigenous children from their families and communities. Number two, Neville held considerable authority and control over the lives of the children at Moor River. Number three, Moor River Native Settlement was an institution where indigenous children were subjected to European cultural practices, education, and discipline. For many children, Neville represented a figure from the outside world who had the power to shape their lives in the unknown ways. In institutions like Moor River, disobedience or resistance to authority figures could result in punishment. This could have created an environment where children were conditioned to fear authority figures like Neville in order to avoid negative consequences. Hence, Neville's authority, his role in enforcing policies of separation and assimilation, the institutional environment of Moor River and the children's lack of understanding about his intentions are likely 
contributed to the fear that the children felt toward him his position of power and control over the lives made him a formidable and potentially intimidating figure in their eyes now we are moving to the 10 marks questions from the novella the right the rabbit proof fence here you have three questions and out of three questions you need to attempt only one question so plenty of choice question number 1 what did navelli believed would happen to mixed blood and full blood ab original people once his plan was implemented explain e o navelli was the chief protector of ab origins ab origins in western australia during the early 20th century and he played a central role in implementing the government's assimilation policies Navelli believed in superiority of white culture and was convinced that the indigenous culture uh, Australian population needed to be assimilated into European ways of life in order to civilize them his beliefs about the outcomes of his plan for mixed blood and full blood of original people were rooted in these assimilation assimil- assimilationist ideals So number 1 assimilation of mixed blood of original people navelli believed that mixed blood individuals means to say both indigenous and european were more amenable to assimilation easy he thought that these individuals could be bred out through intermarriage with white australians leading to a gradual disappearance of aboriginal identity and culture so if the both of them get married what will happen only the european culture will continue and the indigenous culture will not continue he believed that by by absorbing mixed blood individuals into white society they would eventually become indistinguishable from white australians second integration of full blood of original people navelli's views on full blood of original people were more complex while he acknowledged that full blood individuals might be less receptive to assimilation due to their deep connection to traditional cultures he still believed that they would could be integrated into european society he saw education as a tool to change their ways of life and eliminate what he perceived as primitive practices navelli hoped that hoped that hoped that they by educating full blood individuals they could be trained for manual labor and other roles deemed useful for the indian for the white society child removal and institutionalized into uh, institutionalization navelli's policies had le- led to the forced removal of indig- indigenous children from their families as seen in his involvement with more river native settlement he believed that by removing children from their families and communities they could be raised in the institutions where they would be subjected to european education religion and culture the aim was to serve aim was to serve the aim was to serve the ties to the indigenous heritage and upbringing the aim was here to remove i'm sorry the aim was to break the ties with the indigenous heritage and upbringing navelli's beliefs and policies were deeply rooted in paternalistic and ethnocentric world view where he perceived white culture as superior and indigenous cultures as inferior in need of eradication he saw assimilation as a means of eliminate what he considered to be the problem of indigenous culture and identity however his policies had devastating consequences for indigenous families and communities leading to profound intergenerational trauma and cultural disruption it's important to note that navelli's ideas and policies have been widely criticized for the harmful impact on indigenous people and his approach is now widely recognized as having contributed to the loss of cultural heritage and identity among indigenous australians so this was the first question for 10 marks 
second question explicate the devastating effects of colonization on the ab original tribes based on your reading of the rabbit proof fence novella so friends your question paper is very lengthy so hope you need to have very good time management to answer this question paper it's a big big challenge for you guys okay answer the rabbit proof fence by doris pilkington garima also known as nyugi Ger nyugi garimara provides a poignant depiction of the devastating effects of colonization on ab original tribes in australia the story is set during a time when government policies aimed to assimilate indigenous children into european cultural by force by forcibly removing from their families and communities it means to say to remove their basic roots of indigenous culture and to mingle them with the european culture this is the main concept this practice known as the stolen generations it was a direct consequence of colonization and had far reaching negative impacts on ab original tribes so here there are few uh, there are few effects highlights which talks about the devastating effects so with the key points we are trying to understand number 1 one of the most tragic consequences of colonization was the forced separation of indigenous culture indigenous children from their families number 2 the policies of assimilation sought to erase indigenous cultures and language in the favor of european ways of life this led to the erosion of erosion of traditional practices customs and the languages that had been passed down through generations so it won't be existing in future indigenous australians have a deep spiritual and cultural connections to the ancestral lands the harsh living condition in institutions like mo river native settlement depicted in the story had detrimental effects on the physical and the mental health of the children the policy of assimilation aimed to make indigenous children abandon their cultural identity and adopt european ways sixth the impacts of colonization and the stolen generations are not confined to a single generation the trauma experienced by those who were forcibly removed from their families and cultures has been passed down to the subsequent generations hence the novella the rabbit proof fence vividly portrays the devastating effects of colonization on ab original tribes emphasizing the enduring pain loss challenges faced by those who are subjected to these policies the story sheds light on the resilience of indigenous indigenous individuals and the communities as they strive to reclaim the their cultural identity and heal from the wounds of the past so this is a question number 2 for 10 marks last question for 10 marks from the section b don't worry still you have a lot of things to go on highlights the role of will power in the novella the rabbit proof fence in the rabbit proof fence by doris pilkington garima garimara who is also known as newji garimara will power plays a significant role in the lives of the indigenous characters particularly molly craig daisy uh, cadible and the gracie fields these are the famous characters in this story in this novella these three girls demonstrate remarkable determination determination courage resilience as they embark on a journey to escape the moor river native settlement and reunite with their families they try to run away and to get back to the families the will power is the central to their survival and their ability to overcome the challenges they face so here are some important ways which highlight the will power's important key points number 1 escape and journey the girl's decision to escape from the moor river settlement is a testament to the strong will power they are determined to break free from the oppressive environment and the separation from the families the journey to follow the rabbit proof fence for hundreds of miles is a reflection 
of their unwavering determination to return home. Perseverance. Throughout their journey, the girls encounter numerous obstacles, including, including harsh weather conditions, hunger, the threat of capture. Despite these challenges, their willpower enables them to, to enables them to persevere. They continue walking, driven by the deep desire to be reunited with their families. Resourcefulness, resourcefulness. Not, resource, not resourcefulness, resourcefulness. The girls rely on the resourcefulness and creative thinking to survive. Their willpower prompts them to find water, food, shelter along the way. They use the knowledge of the land and the intuition to make crucial decisions. Unity, unity and support. The girls' collective willpower is reinforced by their unity and support for each other. They draw strength from their bond as sisters and the shared determination to reach their destination. The mutual, their mutual encouragement and emotional support are integral to, the, to their ability to keep going, overcoming fear. The girls face moments of fear and uncertainty during their journey, especially when they encounter strangers or authorities who could potentially capture them. The willpower helps them overcome the fear and continue moving forward despite the risk. Resistance to assimilation. The girl's determination to escape the Moor River settlement is an act of resistance against the assimilation policies that sought to erase their cultural identity. Their willpower enables them to persevere the indigenous heritage and reject the attempts to mold them into something they are not. Connection to ancestral lands. The girl's willpower is fueled by the deep connection to the ancestral lands. The determination to return home reflects the understanding of the spiritual and cultural significance of the land to their identity. So to conclude, we can say that Willpower in the novella, the rabbit proof fence underscores brings out the strength of the human spirit in the face of adversity. The girls' determination to reclaim their identities, reunite with their families, resist the oppressive forces of colonization, showcase, <coughs> showcase the extraordinary resilience and serves as an inspiring example of power of the human will to overcome seemingly insurmountable challenges. So friends, these are the questions for, I should say, the part A, 25 marks, and the part B, 15 marks. So totally, as of now, we have discussed here, uh, 25 plus 15, 40 marks question paper. Now we have section C, that is 20 marks, which consists the language component, and let me just recall here, which are the language component you have here. You have uh, composing invitations. You have telephonic skills, means to say where you need to um, write the dialogues, telephonic dialogues, then professional symbols, then understanding the news headlines. So the language components is for 20 marks. So let's move on to the 20 marks questions. Very easy questions. You can get out of out. Pay much attention to this section at least if you really want to get the best marks. Now the question number one, part six, question number one. Now let me tell you this part six you have here, choice, you have the choice. Uh, okay, so no need to worry, you have choice here. Now let's understand what the, what is the, uh, uh, what kind of question is this, sorry. The literary club of your college will be staging a play nine jaco hill on 5th september 2023 in the college auditorium you need to draft an invitation on behalf of your, of your club to invite students and faculty to the problem to the program so make, let me let me make it very simple see like uh, you you remember that when you take part in the different intercollege fest or any any fest your college uh, organizes so sometimes you are given the responsibility to make a poster uh, by using Canva or the other different applications. Same here, you need to make it manually. 
okay your college name then you mention so here you are going to mention a kind of invitation on behalf of a literary club they are staging a kind of a movie a kind of a play here and the venue is college auditorium and you need to invite everybody here so in the examination you can do like this this is the uh, this is a, this is like a sample answer your answer may dif may differ from my answer as well so first the literary club of sri degree college bangalore solicits the pleasure of your presence on the occasion of staging the play nine jaco hill at 6 pm on 5th of december 2023 at stc auditorium all are welcome principal etc you can mention so you can use your own creativity you can use the maybe the color pencil color pen also pencil color also you can use it to make it more decorative you can also design manually so that you can get 5 out of 5 try to fill one full page of your answer script uh, give some boundary uh, do some decoration so do some more make it more elegant so that you can get 5 out of 5 so in option to this there's an alternate to this question an adventure club that you are a part of is going to track to br hills on 10th june 2023 saturday invite your friends who are also nature nature enthusiasts to join you the group assemble at 5 pm at majestic bus stand bangalore on the day 5 marks so SK Adventure Club organizes track to BR Hills to the nature enthusiast on 10th September 2023 Saturday pick up point this drop point this kindly report on time for any queries contact so again left to the your creativity how interesting how informative and how elegant and decorative you make it you will be getting 5 marks so invitation composition is for 5 marks first question in the language component now 15 marks questions are left moving next to the part 7 as i told you part 7 is a telephonic dialogue writing so here you need to write the dialogues keeping in mind that you are talking to somebody over the phone so smita bought an exercise bike from deccan sports store last month and it turned out to be defective hence she needs to have it repaired or replaced develop a telephonic conversation between smita and the manager of the store this is for 5 marks so i, I won't i won't read the i i'm not going to read the answer you can go through on the screen here it's very easy so you can develop the telephonic conversation between smita and manager speaking about the defects of the bike which you purchased on august 15 mentioning the receipt number and also follow the also follow that what the manager says do the follow up so like this you can prepare around 10 dialogues because this question is for 5 marks so better to prepare the 10 dialogues so while preparing the dialogues keep in your mind punctuation plays very important role punctuation comma apostrophe full stop and make it more uh, the dialogues in a very uh, spoken form rather than in the written form so now we are moving to the another option you have another option here you can opt if you don't like that question as a dialogue writing you have another situation you have planned your college trip with fun day travel agency as a coordinator you have to call the agency to enquire certain details about travel arrangements hotel booking and so on write a travel conversation between you and the travel agency so you need to call hello is this fun day travel agency my name is i'm the coordinator of the college trip Uh, have plan with the agency so you mention i just given you a simple question uh, again, a simple answer so this is not the this is not the final answer because dialogue writing or the dialogues always differ from person to person it's your creativity it's your thought process so that's the reason that i not mention here any person's name or any company's name so that's better that you practice by yourself so this is how you can prepare the dialogues so second question from the language first question from the language component for 5 marks what's the first question uh, invitations second question is here telephonic dialogue writing now we are moving to the third question we have here third question we have from the proofreading component part 8 eighth part it's very interesting one uh, why is proofreading necess a necessity so here you have now you have uh, how many four questions you have four questions four marks uh, sorry four questions 
five marks. You will be having here four questions, five marks. Proofreading means correction of errors and inaccuracies in a given manuscript, typescript, or printed copy before publication. In its broadcast sense, proofreading implies every kind of verification, authentication, and confirmation of statements appearing in a copy. But more generally, the term is applied to the correction of printer's error. So now see here, which sign is used to indicate to remove a word or a letter? So this is the sign. This symbol is used to delete or is used to delete or to take out the content. So this, so each question is for five mark. Then you have another question. You have a situation. The company's policies were re rewritten. Proofread the sentence using appropriate symbols. So one thing is very important. All of you should know the proofreading symbols, which you will come to know in the next question. So here we find a mistake here. Companies. It should be company apostrophe s. So what is wrong is here. This is wrong. And here, wherever it's wrong, we'll, we'll make here this symbol, which indicate to delete. Then afterwards, we need to write with correction. The company's policies were rewritten. So this is for one mark. Now, what do the following symbols or signs indicate? So in your model question paper, they have given two symbols. What have, what have I done? I have extracted this information from a textbook. And I suggest you to go through all the symbols so that any two symbols might be asked in the examination. So this symbol here refers to to delete or to take out. This symbol here refers to insert a phrase of the word. This symbol here refers to transport letters of the words. Next symbol here refers to move to the right. This symbol refers to move to the left. This symbol refers to, to use the capital letter. This symbol refers to next one, the lowercase letters. The next symbol refers to close up a space. Next symbol refers to add a space. Next symbol refers to make a new paragraph. Then this symbol refers to insert period. This symbol refers to apostrophe or single quote. And for semicolon or the colon, these two symbols. To insert comma, this one symbol. So in the exams, they might ask you two symbols for two marks. So I have given you the complete symbols, uh, guide symbols, uh, one small guide, any two symbols. So by heart, mug up, whatever you do, but you try to recall. So otherwise, you'll be losing here two marks questions. Actually, I should have mentioned here it's for two marks please correct it so this proofreading part a is a proofreading that is for five marks questions now we are coming to the last part of your question paper and uh, let me just see once again what is the last part of your question paper is here understanding the news headlines so here here you have three three questions it's a compulsory question there is no choice in this question in this part here it's all the questions are compulsory Headlines will be given and you need to expand the headlines. For example, Goa minister condemns attack on tourists. This is a headline. Now you need to expand the headlines in keeping in mind that if it appears on newspaper, how will it appear? So you can write uh, one paragraph. I have given the, the lengthy answer. You can write four or five lines to expand it. So Goa minister condemns attack on tourists. So you can go through the answer. Then next one. Uh, CM to open athletic meet. Again, you think about that with CM, where he went and what kind of athletic meet was uh, opened, what is the function so you can mention it. So like just go through the few newspapers, you'll get more ideas when the headline comes in the very first paragraph of any news which gives a brief information about the complete news and after the second paragraph onwards, you find the detailed or the elaborative news. So you need, to, you need to go through the first paragraph. Then you have third question, world's largest diamond stolen. So like this, the three three captions or the three headlines will be given and you need to uh, explain the headlines. You need to elaborate the headlines in five, six lines. And this is how you have three marks questions. And now you have the last two marks question. I forgot to mention here. This is the last two marks question. Write a suitable title headline for the given news article. So you need to read this news article. I'm not going to read. You can go through on the screen here. You need to read this news article. Don't copy this. Just go through it and you need to give a suitable headline which is suitable for the newspaper. Keep in the mind. You are right. Attempting question for the newspaper. 
okay so this question is for two marks keep in the mind writing headline for the two marks question so young cricketer kunal singh rathore gears up for ipl 2023 shares his inspiration and aspirations this is for two marks because i have forgotten to mention here the marks here so like this like this proof reading five marks and uh, newspaper headlines five marks question so language components you have four important language components one is uh, drafting the invitations five marks and writing telephonic conversation five marks then five questions for proofreading symbols meaning of proofreading importance of proofreading and with one example for the correction five marks and the last one is here five marks for the newspaper headlines so oh, three three headlines will be given one marks for each you need to explain and one paragraph will be given and you need to go through the paragraph and you need to write the headline so friends this is how i have tried to answer this model question paper of fourth semester additional english for all the courses under bangalore city university bcu so i have tried my best the source of this or the source of this question paper is your textbook convergence 4 and confluence 4 i suggest you to go through the textbook for more information and thank you so much for watching my videos if you like this videos click on the like button write in the comment box and if you are not yet subscribe my channel please do subscribe thank you once again wish you very good luck dear friends thank you so much for watching this video you can reach me at mukesh english at the rate of gmail dot com please do subscribe the channel click on the like button for more videos on literature workbook pronunciation grammar communication skills presentation skills interview skills stay in tune with mukesh english thank you once again